Hello, and welcome to Top Knot Education, where you get insight and summary into the chapter of a classic novel in under five minutes. Today we will be talking about J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye, Chapter 10. I should mention that I quit this channel because I was only getting a handful of views on each video, and they take quite a bit of time to make. Since I quit, views have been increasing steadily, so I'm back. Still only 30 subscribers though, so add me and I promise it will help me stay motivated to finish the book and do other literary classics afterwards. Holden begins Chapter 10 talking about his family. If you remember, he disparages brother DB in Chapter 1, and he mourned the death of his younger brother Allie in Chapter 6. Now he's talking about his little sister Phoebe. Like Allie, Holden doesn't have anything bad to say about Phoebe. He loves her positive youthful energy and how smart she is. He talks about how she wrote a book for fun about a kid detective named Hazel Weatherfield. Her book is a lot like DB's short story, The Secret Goldfish, in the sense that it's art for the sake of artistic expression and joyfulness, not selling out to make money. Holden wants to call Phoebe, but he's afraid his parents will answer the phone. From the hotel room lobby, he follows the sound of a band to the Lavender Room. The band is corny, far too showy for Holden's sensibilities. He tries to order alcohol, but the waiter recognizes that he's too young. There are three women in their 20s sitting at the table next to him. One, a blonde, is pretty, the other two are not. Holden starts to give them the eye. They laugh and he realizes they must think he's too young. Undaunted, he leans over to their table and says, Wouldn't you girls care to dance? They keep giggling. It's clear they don't consider him a romantic partner, but they also agree to dance with them one at a time. He really likes dancing with the blonde, by the end of it declaring he's practically in love with her. This is another example of Holden mixing up his raging teenage emotions. He is sexually interested, but he communicates that interest as love. Then he does something even more strange. He kisses the blonde right on the top of the head, which freaks her out. The kiss is right in line with all the rest of Holden's confusion. A kiss on the top of the head is very paternal, something a parent does to a child, or something Holden would do to his aforementioned kid sister Phoebe. But it doesn't make sense in this context. Holden is a 16-year-old dancing with and becoming turned on by a 25-year-old at a club. It's not the place for paternal acts of affection, but he's so lonely and he misses his family so much the confu uh, confused behavior makes some sense. He continues to hang out with the three girls and buys them all their drinks, even though he finds them boring. He keeps catching them glancing around the cl club. He thinks they're looking for movie stars or something, but it's just as likely that they're embarrassed to be hanging out with someone so young or simply looking for older guys. At one point, they do think they see a movie star and get very excited, which disgusts Holden even more. The chapter ends abruptly. The girls all get up suddenly and declare they're going home. It seems the night is a failure for them, even with the weird young guy that bought so many of their drinks. Many of our themes have resurfaced in this chapter. Holden is trying to be an adult, but the world is still treating him like a kid. The bartender won't sell him drinks, and the girls won't take him seriously as a potential lover. Moreover, he's not ready for them to anyway. Remember, it was just last chapter that he turned down a potential hookup with Faith Cavendish. The fact that he declares his love for the blonde and then paternally kisses her on the head on the dance floor further emphasizes his romantic and interpersonal confusion. That's all for chapter 10. It's good to be back. Now get to class.